The Archmage claims there are hardly any opportunities for the common citizen to improve their lot. The rich stay rich, the poor stay poor. That's nonsense, of course. Have you got that? Nonsense. Yep, got it. He pleads for more education, for the poor as well. What do you say to that? Too complicated. My party and I have found a simpler way. From tomorrow, anyone can be a winner in life. I present the lottery. And the winners can move from the lower town to the upper town. The winner? Once a month, we grant one citizen from the lower town a better life in our midst. And you will report on it, Mr Fox. The winner's new fabulous life and how I made it possible. The winner. It's singular. The first draw is tomorrow. I expect to see it all over the paper. Very well, madam. I was quite surprised when one morning suddenly the second tower appeared. The older folk remembered that it had once always been there, until one day it just disappeared. They didn't really pay much attention to it at first because the town housed the mage school. Magic stuff happens. But when it didn't return, they just forgot about it. The Archmage no longer lives alone in the tower. He has some family learning the art of magic there too. But it's difficult teaching adults magic. Their minds are less open and they're too stuck in the physical world and they lack the imagination for magic. No, the next generation of real mages will be the young, trained by us in the school. In ten years, the mage tower will be teeming with the school's finest. I'm not so convinced that this lottery is a good idea. Sure, it's a fine thing for the winner, but wouldn't it be a coincidence if the right person won? Presumably the names of all the inhabitants of the lower town are written on slips of paper and one of them drawn. I would imagine the council leader herself would draw the winner. She wants to show people that she can bring a better life. Judging by the size and the wood used, the barrel must contain a precious liquid. Brandy, I bet. Bill uses the crane to smuggle things down to the lower town to evade the duty at the gate. Can't imagine that's allowed. The delivery dock for goods delivered by airship. Bill is one of the town's biggest merchants, and with the war over, more goods land here every day. Hello, Bill. Wilbur. How's business? <laughs> Could be better. I thought business would be booming now that the war's over. It is. But it could be better. Were you in the lower town today? What's the situation like? Those loonies are taking over. What, you mean the protesters? More gold for everyone, they demand. They should work instead, then they'll have gold. But isn't that the problem? They want to work, but there aren't any jobs. There's enough work. I've offered a couple of them work. Yes, but they'd like to be paid. You see, so it is all about gold. You give those layabouts a little finger and they take the whole hand. And who's supposed to pay for it? The honest trader. Then you're on the council leader's side, right? You bet. All the traders are. She's one of us after all, even if only by marriage. Her husband, old Van Buren, was the richest trader in the region. Was? Been dead two years. Was the last Van Buren. His father and his uncle before him were full-blooded salesmen. Out of their parents' vast and powerful trading group, they made an even vaster and more powerful trading group. Van Buren knew what to do, and the widow knows too. She knows the hardships the traders suffer, and is sure to cut taxes. Do you even pay taxes? No, but they're too high nonetheless. What do you think of the lottery? Clever, ain't it? 
What do you mean? Well, you've got to give the rabble the feeling they could make it too, right? Make what? Becoming one of us. As long as everyone down there thinks their current situation is only a temporary condition on the way to fame and fortune, they leave us in peace. But some actually do make it. Yes, exactly. That's the spirit. Anyone can make it if they just try hard enough. Meh! <laughs> Looks like your crane's ready. Oh, yes. Finally, I can lower goods straight down to my store. Saves on customs duty and paying bribes to the town guard down by the gate. Is that legal? Not paying bribes? Don't know. But nowadays, an honest trader's got to look out for number one. I have to be going, Bill. See you next time. See ya. Creepy. The prison. I always try to get past this window fast. Uh, uh, hello? Is anyone there? You bet there is. Uh. My name is Wilbur Weathervane. Who are you? Wilbur Weathervane? Good alias. Call me Mr. X. My friends call me X. X? Strange name. Still, better than Goalpost Head, I guess. Why are you locked up? They want me out of the way. I know too much. But they don't just lock people up for being intelligent. They do if you know the wrong things. We're being watched. By whom? They are watching us. Are they? The wizards? Them! The ones watching us! They're out there! How long have you been in prison? A few days, but I suspect they'll never let me out. I'm a political prisoner. They want to silence me. Tell everyone! The truth is out there. Here? In Seastone? Uh, yes. Probably. Do you really think you'll be in there long? They certainly won't let me go before the elections. That Van Buren wants to show her strength, and it's anybody's guess what'll happen afterwards. Either way, I'm not gonna wait until some court passes judgement on me. I'll escape as soon as I have the chance. Well then, uh, I have to be going. Take care of yourself, brother. All of the expensive shops in Seastone are here in the upper town. This bakery makes the finest pies, the most delicious cakes and the most amazing chocolates. Luckily, I don't have enough money to buy myself a treat every day. Otherwise, it wouldn't be too long before I no longer fit into my teacher's robe. The coat of arms of the proud town of Seastone, capital of the Alliance and largest town in all Aventasia. With the refugee camp on the outskirts of town, Seastone seems larger than ever before. Seastone was never captured during the war. The town has massive walls and stretches about 200 metres into the air like a tower. That's why they called the Great War the War of the Two Towers. Seastone against the Archwitch Motroga's Dark Tower. The latest edition of the Seastone Lookout, the local newspaper. Council Leader Van Buren, we are equal opportunity providers. Tomorrow morning we will present our solution to the poverty problem. We are the only ones with simple and efficient solutions to today's problems. There are loads of election posters hanging here beside the paper. Death entered the election campaign last week. His slogans are, death to all and death is the solution. Hmm, what's this? Hey! Archmage Alistair's a traitor. He uses the artifact of divine fate for his own purposes rather than to help everyone. 
Uh, and here, friends of the Archmage claim he never served in the war and he was not born in Seastone. Those are lies! Some famous knight. He's already lost both legs and his sword in battle, but his fighting spirit is unbroken. Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. Well, I never, if it isn't little Weathervane. Weathervane to you, Mr. Shieldhand. Professor Weathervane, to be precise. Oh, your lordship, forgive me for not kneeling. I see you're still the captain of the town guard. It's captain and its only member. Why aren't there more guards? Surely it's impossible for you to keep the peace all by yourself. The council leader of the merchants doesn't see it that way. She handpicked me for this post. Nothing is more important than loyalty, she said. How are things in the lower town? Same as here, just dirtier and everything smaller. What about the refugees? Dunno, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been down there. From up here, it looks like the tent city has stopped growing. Either there are no new refugees arriving or the place is just full. Aren't you responsible for the lower town too? I can hardly be expected to go down there. The place is crawling with criminals. But... Anyway, the anarchists have erected barricades. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't get into the tent city. Why is the gate closed? I want to go to the lower town. Curfew. After dark, residents of the upper town can only enter the lower town with special permission. Who came up with that? Council leader Van Buren. She's worried about the well-being of the residents of the upper town. And where do I get one of these permits? Nowhere today. You can go to the town hall and apply for one there tomorrow. But, but I'm supposed to meet Remy in the inn tonight. Tough. What's the story behind that statue? That's the Black Knight. He serves as an inspiration for young soldiers of the town guard. He's supposed to motivate them to fight bravely to the last drop of blood. Who was he? No one knows. He was mangled when he was found, but he still had the lust for battle in his eyes. There are posters over there spreading lies about the Archmage. So? Those are lies. Anyone could read them. A couple might even believe them. Eh, what can you do? You, you, you could remove them. I would do it myself, but I don't have any water or a spatula, and, and it's your job. Hmm. All right, then. Tomorrow. Got way too much to do now. So, what are you doing? I'm guarding the town. I'm the town guard. Ah. <sighs> Looks like Bill the Merchant's crane is finally finished. It's been two days. He's been transporting things up and down all day. And you inspected the goods? Why should I? Isn't there a toll on transporting goods like alcohol and pipeweed and other stuff from the upper town to the lower town? There are real crimes going on in this town. I don't even have the resources to take care of them. Bill said something about bribing the town guard. Would you know anything about that? That's an outrageous allegation. The town guard is not bribable. That's good. Otherwise, you'd probably have too much gold. I mean, if no more goods go through the gate here, then no one needs to be bribed, eh? That's right. Hmm. So you're saying Bill is cheating the state of its well-earned taxes because he's smuggling goods into the lower town? Do you want to ban him from running the crane? No. Bill and his colleagues are very influential. Anyway, no one said anything about a ban, did they? Hmm, no. I've got another idea. How can I do it? What do you need to do to stop the smuggling? Someone would have to mark one of Bill's barrels of alcohol and then order it from the lower town. If the said marked barrel turns up there tonight without the bribe, uh, tax having been paid, then we have our evidence. You can be really clever, Mr. Shieldhand. The only problem is, I can't leave this place. I have to guard the town, you see. But you, you can fulfil your civic duty and help the town guard. Civic duty? You want me to do your job? Not for nothing, of course. 
What do you want in return? I would like unrestricted access to the lower town. For a minute, I thought you wanted a pony or something similarly useless. What makes you say that? You say strange things sometimes. Have you never noticed? Yeah, but a pony? Admit it. You were thinking about it. Hmm. Maybe so, but I would still prefer to have free access to the lower town. Excellent. You help me convict Bill, and I give you the key to the gate. Yeah, deal. Mr. Shieldhand? Mr. Professor. I've marked a barrel of Bill's brandy. Excellent. Then go down to the lower town and order a barrel and we'll see what happens. You mean I no longer need a special permit? Correct. You're now on an official mission for the town guard. also built the outhouse. Remy says he's rented this entire strip along the town wall. Maybe he couldn't bear the thought of leaving his stand unattended for a few minutes a day. Hmm, there's a big padlock on the door. If I didn't know who the outhouse belonged to, I'd find that a tad strange. I bet you could pick up the key from Bill for a small fee. Bill Storm. During the day, he sells stuff from the upper town that you can't normally get down here. A wooden box full of old tools. Some sort of metal clamps, a hammer, some wire. Probably Bill uses this stuff to maintain his stand. I'll take the hammer. Most traders and all the nearby farmers sell their goods at the lower town's big market. But Bill claimed this spot here as it's the only place he can sneak in the upper town contraband using his crane. Who's there? And what do you want? It's... it's me! Mr. Shieldhand, I want to talk to you about my bribe. Or lack of, to be precise. Why do you call yourself Mr. Shieldhand? Because I... am... Um, Anton! Anton Shieldhand is my name. And I... want a bribe! <laughs> Petey, is that you? It's bloody dark down there. <clears throat> yes, it's me, Petey. Why are you putting on a funny voice all of a sudden? Um... <laughs> you really are a crazy dog. So what can I do for my favourite errand boy? I need a barrel of brandy for... the inn. No problem. What's the password? I don't know the password. Why not? Aren't you Petey? Step into the light. Yes, I am. But I forgot the password. Ha! <laughs> That's just like you. Ask in the inn. The owner knows it. Fine. Remy looks tired. I think the election campaign and the current situation in the town are really taking their toll on him. Hello, Remy. If it isn't the magic school's new star professor, how was your first day, Wilbur? Please don't ask. What I am asking. You are my friend and you look far from happy. What's wrong? Headmaster Block is very mean to me. 
He gives me loads of difficult tasks. All of which you've solved, knowing you. Yes, but then he gives me new tasks that are even more difficult. And even if I work through the night, I still couldn't finish them all. No one could. Interesting and curious. If he wanted to represent you as the Archmage's bad choice, then he wouldn't have given you exercises that are clearly impossible. People would realize what kind of game was being played, and the trick would backfire. Did you notice anything else? Yes. I surprised Headmaster Block in the staff room as he was rummaging through a desk drawer. But he was startled when I spoke to him, like I caught him doing something. He didn't want you to see him fiddling around in his own desk drawer. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? At uh, first there was the unsolvable exercises, and now the desk draw. Something's not right. That's what I think too. You don't look all that happy yourself. Tough day. Tough week. I'm worried about the Archmage's safety. The situation in the town is explosive. He was heckled on the street while checking up on a field hospital down there. But it was just some wound up idiots. I'm worried about the one assailant who has enough brains, resources and volition. Someone? Like Headmaster Block? Hard to imagine, but it can't be ruled out. We need more information. The council leader was standing up by the new lottery drum, dictating tomorrow's edition of the lookout to a reporter. Yes, she has the lookout under her thumb. She's a horrible piece of work. Ambitious, stubborn and unscrupulous. A dangerous combination. Comes from a humble background, but got her feet under old Van Buren's table. Tried to persuade him to do all sorts of new business deals and start a career in politics. Many say he died so young because he finally wanted to be left in peace. How did she end up as the Archmage's most promising challenger? The Archmage doesn't want the most important posts in government to go automatically to the richest citizens anymore, but rather to the most competent people, chosen by the people. And of course the nobility and the merchants don't like that one bit. They were seething when they found out about it, but there was nothing they could do to start with. The Archmage was too popular, untouchable. But then along came Sybil Van Buren, and she had a plan. The election was to be approved and set for one year's time. One year in which she put up obstacles in the Archmage's way and sabotaged his politics in any way she could. Her only aim was to make him look bad. By the gods, how I'd load it if she succeeded. But we, we will win the election, right? The Archmage, I mean. Van Buren has used all her resources. They're powerful, rich friends with important posts at the Seastone Lookout. It's the only newspaper left in town. Simple slogans, simple solutions, patriotism and resentment. She tells the people what they want to hear. And yet, the Archmage will win the election. Every vote for the council leader and her cronies is a vote too many. But stupidity amongst the voters has not prevailed yet. Why doesn't the Archmage defend himself more aggressively against the council leader? Why doesn't he just tell everyone about her scheming? He wants as many people as possible to take part in solving our problems. He doesn't want there to be two sides at each other's throats. But I don't know if it will work. People are starting to accept the conditions. They blame everyone and everything, and they don't even try to change anything anymore. I asked the Archmage about it. You know what he said? He's comfortable having things stay as they are. That's why many favor it. Progress requires effort. What kind of world would it be if there was glaring injustice and everyone put up with it just because change takes too much effort? But hey, I'm just a rat. What do I know? So what do we do now? Keep an eye on Headmaster Block and see what happens? Show near the elections. A supporter of the council leader behaving suspiciously in the vicinity of the Archmage. No, too risky. We can't wait. So, you're going to have a look for yourself? Phew, I'd like to, but perhaps that's precisely their plan. An officially unofficial employee of the Archmage sniffing about in the office of one of his political opponents. Wouldn't be good if word got out. A first-rate scandal. But what about a teacher looking for a form in the staff room? A teacher who is in the school because the headmaster has given him tasks to be done. <laughs> Normally I would try to discourage you, but the Archmage is visiting the school tomorrow. If his opponents are planning something, we have to expose them tonight. I'll do it. I'll have a look around and get back to you if I discover anything. All right, but be careful, Wilbur.
Archmage Alistair gave me a magic slate. Hmm, that's just like him. He likes magical playthings. That's not all. The slate advised me to build a golem to help me with my work. A golem? They're very strong, so it could help me with a lot of my work. Yes, but I was thinking of something else. Think about it. We agree the Archmage is the most powerful living wizard. Of course. No one could touch a hair on his head with a magical attack. But brute force, a stone to the head, a knife in the ribs. That could be a possibility. But now imagine that he had a bodyguard, a big chap, hard as stone. Such as a, a golem, for example. Exactly. Even a troll wouldn't get past the golem. But the best thing, golems are absolutely loyal. They simply cannot help but follow their master's commands. And if I order it to defend the Archmage with its life... Then that's exactly what it'll do, and no one would get past it. That sounds fantastic. Can you manage that? Building a golem and bringing it to life? I'll sure try, at any rate. I'll get it to complete the Headmaster's stupid tasks first, and then guard the Archmage. The Headmaster and the Council Leader have come up against the wrong gnome. Then let's not waste any time. I'll build a golem bodyguard for the Archmage and have a look around the Headmaster's office. Good idea. And let me know as soon as you find anything peculiar. No heroes will be weather vane. I'll be careful. I'll go back underground. I want to find out about the dark magic the Archmage has been sensing for days. Good luck. You and Van Buren will not succeed with your plan. You may have great and powerful friends, but the Archmage has small and cleverer ones. <laughs>